on her grew further. How could she perform against one of the all-time greats in such a big arena? Goff settled into the match early, breaking to go 3-2 up in the first set, and then crucially, very importantly, breaking for 5-4 in the second before serving out for the victory against a player who has already won four Grand Slam titles. That's incredible. Very in- um, and these Grand Slam titles were, were won, in fact, before she was even born. Goff was super shocked at beating Williams. I literally got my dream draw, so I'm super happy I was able to pull it out, she said in her post, post-match post interview uh, news conference. Post means uh, after, pre, so if it were pre-match, it would be before the match, and post-match means after the match. She played amazing, was just super nice. She's always been nice the couple of times I met her, Gove said. So here's a, some facts about um, Coco Gove. She became the youngest tennis player to win a match at Wimbledon since 1991, when fellow American Jennifer Capriati, at the age of 15, defeated nine times champion Martina Navratilova. She grew up in Atlanta, Georgia, before moving to Florida to follow tennis, to pursue tennis. And Gove is currently coached by Jean Christophe Forel, who is a former ATP player. Um, and coach of Adrian Mariano and is part of team Murtaglou has tr- uh, so she has trained at this uh, Murtaglou Academy in France since she was 10 when asked about what she can achieve in the sport the teenager said she has been given a target to be the greatest my dad told me I could do it when I was 8 said Goff who is being nurtured by Serena Williams's coach Patrick Murtaglou Obviously, you never believe it. I'm still like not a hundred percent confident, but you have to say you have to say things. You never know what happens. Former American number six Chanda Rubin has all, also followed Gove's career closely. She told BBC Sport, "We've seen we've seen something incredible. Just 15 years of age, her very first Grand Slam main draw, a first Wimbledon match draw against Venus Williams, who played a good match. I think we're seeing." I think we're seeing a champion in the making here. So uh, what we say in English in this, uh, when we talk about her career, she's only 15, we would we would say, watch this space. Again, you can find this article and the link below, which will bring you to the BBC website. And our last story today is a story that ties in with our first story. It's connected to our first story. And it's a story about digital nomads. Let me explain to you what a digital nomad is. It's someone who works online and uses the internet to be able to work from anywhere in the world that would have a a sufficient internet connection. This story comes from Forbes. And it's about digital nomads that are flocking to talking about which cities that they are going to. So thanks to the Internet, more millennials are working remotely more than ever. To work remote means to work uh, not in an office. Um, The more adventurous are embracing the digital nomad lifestyle and taking their careers internationally. Jumping from one destination to another, these expats are crisscrossing the globe as they grow their careers online. Think, three months in Bali, Indonesia, and then two in Chiang Mai, Thailand, or what about six months in Berlin, Germany? For digital nomad millennials, the possibilities are endless. Attempting to see where digital nomads spend their time, gap year escape, is um, a website, a backpacking and adventure travel blog, looked at 12,000 photos tagged with the hashtag digital nomad on Instagram, analyzing the number of times a destination was geotagged. Obviously, their list is only a a snapshot or a small idea of where digital nomads spend their time as they only looked at the tagged Instagram posts. Anyway... 
The website found that Europe is the most popular continent for digital nomads, with 11 out of the 25 cities listed, including Barcelona and Lisbon. Asia ranked a close second, with 28% of the posts tagged on the continent. Overall, the United States was the most popular country for digital nomads, with cities like New York, Los Angeles and Miami ranking in the top 25. Thailand was a close second. So if you would like to see a full list of that, you can get yourself to Gap Year Escapes website and you can uh, hover over the info uh, infograph and it will show you which cities are the most popular for the digital nomads. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the show or this episode and that I have introduced you to uh, a few new expressions and improved on your listening in English and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next episode. So all the best from me. Mm-hmm.